Hello everyone! To celebrate Halloween, I've decided to rank all the films in the Halloween series. This isn't a definitive list, just my personal opinion, so let me know how you'd rank the series in the comments below. Totally. Number 10, Halloween Resurrection. The reason this is the worst Halloween film is because H2O put the series back on track and was a fitting end to the series. But H2O made a lot of money, so they made one more too many. This sequel kills an institutionalized Laurie Strode in the first act, pretty much dumping on the character's closure from the previous movie. The plot involves teens staying the night in the Myers house shooting a live internet horror show, giving half the movie a found footage feel. I don't know why they followed up the success of H2O with this horrible webcam gimmick. Thanks to this movie, the original series concludes with a dead Laurie and Busta Rhymes defeating Michael Myers with Kung Fu. Trick or treat. Motherfucker. <laughs> Number 9, Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Part 5 ended on a cliffhanger. What's with Michael's tattoo? Who's the guy in black who busted out Michael? What happened to Jamie? It only took them six years to give us the disappointing answers. Dimension Films came on board, and the film was hurt by too many cooks in the kitchen, resulting in rewrites and reshoots. I recently watched the producer's cut of the film, and I do like it a bit more than the theatrical version. It explains more, but still has a convoluted ending. <laughs> Danielle Harris was recast as Jamie Lloyd, and the character was killed off in the first act, angering many fans. <coughs> Turns out after the events of Part 5, Jamie was kidnapped by the Cult of Thorn, raped by her uncle Michael Myers, and gave birth to his child at the age of 15. Ew. The Myers house, no longer abandoned, is now occupied by the Strode family cause reasons. However, it's the film that introduced us to Paul Rudd and said farewell to Donald Pleasance who passed away during production. Not dead. <laughs> Just very much retired. In the end, The Cult of Thorn was too bizarre and most fans wish they didn't try to explain Michael Myers' origins. Number 8, Rob Zombie's Halloween. After The Devil's Rejects, I was excited for Rob Zombie's remake of Halloween. But while Love Hurts played, I, I remember a wave of disappointment washing over me. Love hurts. The first act is a prequel. We see that Michael Myers grew up with a stripper mom, slutty sister, and abusive stepfather. You see this? As soon as heals, I'm gonna break it again on your fucking face! Enough, alright? Instead of Michael being born a killer, Zombie takes their nurture route. The majority of the characters are foul-mouthed hillbillies and extremely unlikable. The whore with the big tits hanging down to her knees? Maybe I'll choke the chicken, purge my snorkel all over them flappy-ass tits. Fucking whore! <laughs> Bitch, I will crawl over there and I will scum fuck the shit out of you! When the orderlies are raping one of the patients, you start to forget that Michael is supposed to be the villain because everyone is just despicable. The movie gets better during the second and third act, but that's because it's a rushed remake of Carpenter's film. However, it trades atmosphere and suspense for more nudity and gore. The original is a classic, so it's like someone took the Mona Lisa, drew tits on it, covered her in blood, and wrote fuck in the corner. Number 7, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Rob Zombie's sequel divided fans even further, but I actually like H2 a bit more than the remake. All the origin stuff is over so we get an original story. The cinematography is better because they use less shaky cam and lock the camera down more. It left us with some great visuals, although not everyone liked the hallucination scenes. I didn't mind Michael's hobo look because he'd be homeless in real life. I don't expect him to have a job or apartment somewhere. Plus, putting on the mask only when he's killing makes the mask more special. The police are going to be looking for a guy in a Shatner mask, eh, while most people avoid eye contact with a hobo. The boss don't like your bums hanging out back here, rooting around through the dumpsters. Much like the remake, what hurts the film is the characters and dialogue. What up, dick lickers? <laughs> Zombie wanted to show how the tragedy of the first movie affected the characters, which is a great idea, but Lori becomes too whiny and obnoxious. Lori in H2O is still haunted by that night, yet remained likable. I like Malcolm McDowell, but Loomis is turned into an egotistical jerk more worried about his book sales than saving lives. When I want your opinion, I'll beat it out of you. 
The only likable people are Sheriff Brackett, played by Brad Dorif, and Annie, played by fan favorite Danielle Harris. It's not great, but to me, it beats the remake because it's more creative and tells an original story. <laughs> Number 6, Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. After the success of Part 4, Part 5 was rushed into theaters the next year, and it shows. The ending of Part 4 sets Jamie up as the new killer, but Part 5 totally just kind of ignores that. Instead, Jamie is in a mental hospital and plays the first half of the movie as a mute. Say it again! Ina? I love it! It restricts our main character, but Danielle Harris is a talented little actress and pulls it off. Turns out after being shot up at the end of Part 4, Michael was able to crawl away. Michael falls into another coma and is cared for by a hermit until he wakes up one year later on Halloween. What? You're gonna take care of a guy who's just laying there in your bed for a year? He was diddling him. He was diddling him. Rachel, the co-survivor of Part 4, is unceremoniously killed off in the first act. I'm starting to notice a pattern. If anything, the new friend Tina should have been killed first and Rachel should have lived a bit longer, perhaps sacrificing herself to save Jamie. Michael gets a different mask than Part 4, but it still looks weird. You really don't care about any of the new characters and half the movie is teasing and setting up the next disappointing installment. After the success of Part 4, this was a step back. <laughs> Number 5, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. I know, I know. It, it's controversial because it doesn't have Michael Myers in it. It's treated like the redheaded stepchild of the series. But after rewatching all the movies, I have to say that Part 3 is one of the better entries. After Part 2, Halloween was to become an anthology series with a new story every year centered around Halloween. However, when Season of the Witch came out, fans turned on it because it didn't have Michael Myers. Is it true? Do audiences really just want to see the same thing over and over again, instead of original ideas? In this film, a doctor uncovers a toy maker's plan to sacrifice a bunch of kids using an ancient Celtic ritual involving a stolen boulder from Stonehenge and Halloween masks. It's a bizarre concept, but is original, memorable, and well made. It brings witchcraft to the computer age and their social commentary on marketing, consumerism, and television. The film has gained a cult following over the years and really doesn't deserve all the hate. Give it another watch with an open mind. It's a fun B-horror film to watch every Halloween and that jingle will get stuck in your head. Please stand by. Watch the magic pumpkin. The watch. third channel. It's still on the third channel. Please, take off the third channel. Stop it, please, for God's sakes, please stop it. Turn it off. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. And could you take off anything Kardashian related? Number four, Halloween H2O. Halloween 6 was a mess, so for the 20th anniversary, they wanted to go back to John Carpenter's original. H2O pretends that part 4 through 6 never happened, therefore erasing Jamie and the Cult of Thorn. The plus side is that it brings back Jamie Lee Curtis. 20 years later, Lori has faked her death, changed her name to Carrie Tate, and is the headmistress of a private school in California. For the fourth film in a row, a female character from a previous film, this time Nurse Chambers, is killed off in the first act. Sadly, the rest of the movie isn't as suspenseful as the opening scene. Michael is able to track Lori down, which begs the question, what the hell was he doing for 20 years? One weird thing about this movie is that they couldn't decide on a mask, so Michael wears three different versions, including a CGI mask in one shot. Ah, 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 ah. Most of the side characters are forgettable, but that's because this is Lori's movie. We see her being haunted by that night, and she lives in fear every day. But when Michael does show up, she faces him head on, and the last 20 minutes are great. Michael! To me, this is the end of the series. <laughs> Number 3, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. After the failure of Part 3, the producers realized they needed to bring back Michael. So what if we saw him burn to death? Money has magical healing powers. 
The movie mainly works because it's, uh, it's the same as the original. While being transferred, Michael Myers escapes, where he steals some coveralls and car from a mechanic. He then drives to Haddonfield, where he steals a mask from a store and tries to kill a member of his family. Sound familiar? They write off their Laurie Strode character, and we got Danielle Harris as Jamie Lloyd. Four and five wouldn't be as watchable without her. Loomis also returns, and the character is a highlight of every sequel he's in. My main complaint is that the mask isn't as intimidating as the Shatner mask. The mask is so simple, it's amazing how the sequels messed it up. Also, the actor playing Michael looks weird because they had him wear hockey pads. The ending left fans talking because they were trying to set up Jamie as the new killer, even though we know they really didn't do anything with that in Part 5. Number 2. Halloween 2. The sequel picks up right where the first one ended, a continuation of the night Michael came home. Lori is taken to the hospital, which becomes a fun setting, even if it feels kind of empty. We also have that Empire Strikes Back moment when Lori discovers that she is adopted and Michael Myers is her brother. One thing that hurts the film a little is that after the success of Friday the 13th and other slashers, writer-producer John Carpenter directed some reshoots to add nudity and gore. Yes, people die, but Halloween was more about suspense than blood. It's a solid sequel and would have been a fitting end to Michael and Laurie's story, but we know that did not happen. Number 1. John Carpenter's Halloween John Carpenter's Halloween is a classic horror film and one of the most profitable independent films ever made. It's low budget, simple, and very effective. It's all about suspense, and the simplistic score Carpenter wrote is iconic and added to the atmosphere. Almost 40 years later, there's probably nothing I can say that hasn't already been said. For God's sakes, it's preserved in the National Film Registry of the Library of Congress. Often imitated in the 80s, but never duplicated, it can't beat the original. What's the boogeyman? As a matter of fact, it was. Don't forget to share your ranking and thoughts on the series below. Thanks for watching and happy Halloween.